the hell? This is why you have ceremonial swords. At least you know where that thing is 24/7. And with round the clock security, logs, CCTV, the works. Unless you get betrayed, this would never happen. But then again, we wouldn't have this movie. And I'd much rather have this movie. Who shall we pillage a village, lay low until they don't remember you, and then we rise like a fiery phoenix from the ashes to overthrow the government? Ah, oh, sh**. Here we go again. Or we could just talk. Hello, this is Under the African Sun. I'm your friendly African NPC, and welcome to the channel. Okay, so I haven't seen the boy and the heron. Why is that information important? Well, Nimona lost to it for best animated feature at the Oscars. Don't take their word for it. Take mine. This movie is <laughs> metal. Yeah, what she said, and hella fun at it. You heard it here on the internet, so it has to be true. That's just basic knowledge. So he's watching the video till the end. Now you're pushing it. Hush, child. So, you got a plan? Of course I got a plan. <laughs> yeah, boy. Something, something, something. We win. So I prefer to leave the cast and characters to the end of my videos, if I'm gonna talk about them. But this time around, let's do things differently. Yes, your performances were amazing. Chloe Grace Moretz and Riz Ahmed bounced off each other like tennis. Eugene Lee Yang and Francis Cornroy slid into their roles like stockings. And Big Bennett brought us Sir Thaddeus Showplay. Screw you, Thod. And hell yes, Bennett. Senor Torres, Mia Collins, and... Wait a minute. I like this. These people were just having fun, ne? On a more microscopic view, the two leads were really good castings. Chloe brings an energy to Nimona which you wouldn't expect from a thousand year old monster. Golden ear. Riz breathes life into a character who, regardless of what the world may think of him, wants to do the right thing. He goes through some run-of-the-mill framed by the higher-ups trope and it was fun watching him go through it. Which brings me to Thod. Bennett, you son of a gun, you made me hate and love this guy. Everybody knows Thod, right? That one son of a bitch who's just the worst with the right intentions. I just wanted to say, I know I've always been tough on you and I never thought you belonged here. And? And what? In some alternate universe, I can see myself being friends with this idiot. Then we'd get into some white people type of trouble and I'd be flayed like a Salem witch. And he'd just get grounded. The rest of the cast is nothing short of amazing. Given that this is based on a graphic novel, I am very much interested in checking that out. This movie went places I thought were pretty generic, but it's proof that if the execution is right, you can make a pretty good flick, no matter the idea. It's nothing we haven't seen before, but it's also something we've never seen before. Kind of a paradox. But of all the ingredients that went into making this movie so good, the most important has to be how relatable Nimona is. Remember, this is the worst timeline. We are all a bunch of lonely, misunderstood people who just want a hug. Oh, that's not you? How about feeling so anxious you can't sleep and have nightmares when you're in a safe place? Because who knows what safe is these days, let alone for a thousand year old monster. Not your cup of tea? 
How about being cast out for being born the way you are? Different. Or not knowing the gift of friendship. This one's a classic. Saying you're fine so you spare other people your feelings and wearing a fake smile everywhere. Fake laugh, hiding real pain. Nimona's lived for a thousand years. So to some degree, chances are she's been through everything we've been through and then some. All that is framed through a very pink, very energetic and very relatable um 10 year old not a lot of kids in your life huh i'll talk more about this vessel of relatability in a bit hell she's the reason why i made this whole video thought was a close second if you're a human fear of the unknown should be instinctual that's why my ancestors stayed on the continent and these niggas ancestors got carried off in ships litandizi so the director behaving in such a way shouldn't be too surprising. Peer pressure from our ancestors can be pretty tough. So I feel you. Where we disagree is deciding to wipe out half the kingdom to kill Nimona. The ends do not justify the means. Humans don't like change. But to quote post dad, change boy. Even me. There was a time to be a bad thing. Why do you think I always change the menu at the restaurant? Forever, sooner or later, they would lose their flavor. He's right, Paul. Even in the hypothetical sense, if Nimona was out for revenge, in my book, it would be justifiable. You hurt nobody, and a wall Trump would be proud of was erected to keep you out. I'm gonna come. I mean. I'd definitely oppose you, but I'd understand. What? Okay, enough with everything else. Let's talk about the whole reason I'm here. Nemona. As mentioned before, she's voiced by Chloe Grace Moretz. And by the gods did I like the performance. Are you sure it's not because you're obsessed with her? What? No. Bro, you Say one more word and I'll release. Yeah, that's what I thought. Nimona is one of those characters you just can't help but love. Let's get it straight here. She just wanted a friend who she could be real with. You know, like the you watching this video and the you society sees are two different yous. Huh? She could be anybody she wants, but she goes for unknown super pink girl who eats pizza out of the trash and random ass rats. No, no, and, and then find the proof by hurting him. No, come hey, don't yuck her yum, as the kids say these days. But can you consider this cannibalism? Actually, guys, comment down below. If you're a shapeshifter and you eat what you can shapeshift into. Can it be considered a form of cannibalism? Please pause the video and let me know. <laughs> See, this is why I like this character. She makes me question things I have no business questioning. She has this boundless energy till, well, we'll get to that. And this is the kind of friend you want in your life. Yes, it's more shenanigans that will lead to a flaying, but by the gods will it be exhilarating. I might regret Thod, but I'd willingly jump off a building if Nimona's around. Her magic is like nuclear power. On one hand, super environmentally friendly, since we're all about that jazz, and super energy efficient. On the other hand, Chernobyl, Nagasaki, and the Tsar Bomber. Damn! You can say a lot about humanity, but if we somehow figure this shit out and it becomes a Hey, remember that one time we made a bomb that literally sent shockwaves around the world type story? It's gonna be pretty hilarious. I bet you didn't think you'd be thinking of Nimona and nuclear power in the same breath. But if Barmenheimer was a thing, so can whatever this is. 
being such a massive threat and wielding so much power certainly brought the fear out of people like the director till the point Nimona wanted to take the quick way out as i've already mentioned she's old and she's been through a lot at some point she really got to the point of asking herself what's the point the worst case scenario ensues and she hits a point which a lot of us have hit and well that's the last point some of us have ever hit once you reach there nothing short of a miracle can save you and what is more powerful and miraculous than the power of love i see you nimona drop a like on the video to show some love i really had fun making this one i'm really looking forward to reading the graphic novel when i get my hands on it subscribe to the channel and click here for a video which youtube thinks you really need to watch and here for my last upload i've been your friendly african npc this is under the african sun something something peace